The king of Israel, there's a battle going on, went with the king of Judah, king of Edom, and they marched on the roundabout route seven days. And there was no water. Thanks, singers, you can make your way down. There was no water for the army, nor for the animals that followed them. You ever feel you've got lacking water? Water of life, water of blessing, water of a miracle, water of breakthrough. Keyboard can stay for a bit. And the king of Israel said, Alas, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. Do you ever feel you're being handed over to the enemy? But Joshua said, Is there not a prophet of the Lord here? It's a good question, isn't it? That we may inquire of the Lord by him, trying to find out what's going on. So one of the servants of the king of Israel answered and said, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, is here, who poured water on the hands of Elijah. Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel, Jehoshaphat, and the king of Edom went down to him. Verse 15, But now bring me a musician. This is a prophet. Then it happened when the musician played... The hand of the Lord came upon him, tells you how important music is yeah. to bring the presence and the word of God. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And he said, thus says the Lord, make the valley full of ditches. There's no water. Make the valley full of ditches. For thus says the Lord, you shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water. It's a supernatural miracle, folks. Yeah. Yeah. So when you dig the ditch, God tells you to dig. That's what happens. So that your cattle and your animals may drink. And this is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. He will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. <clears throat> and you shall take every fortified city and every choice city that shall cut down and shall cut down every good tree and stop up every spring of water and ruin every good piece of land with the stones. Now it happened in the morning when the grain offering was offered that suddenly water came by way of Eden. And the land was filled with water. So there's no rain, just the water comes. When all the Moabites saw the kings, they came up to fight against them. All who were able to bear arms and older were gathered, and they stood at the border. They rose up early in the morning, the sun shining on the water, and the Moabites saw the water on the other side of the red, as red as blood. And they said, this is blood. The kings have surely struck swords. They have killed one another. Now therefore, Moab, to the spoil. So when they came to the camp of Israel, Israel rose up, attacked the Moabites, so they fled before them, and they entered their land, killing the Moabites. <clears throat> Father, thank you for your word. Would you speak specifically to each and every one of our hearts this morning? In Jesus' name I pray. Everyone said? Grab a seat. So we've got three kings here. They're going to war against Moab. There's no water for the armies, no water for the animals. And God says, make the valley full of ditches. And without rain, God miraculously fills the ditches. Yeah. <clears throat> but there would be no miracle of water if they didn't dig the ditches. Here's a lesson for us. We have to do our part yeah. to see miracles. Yeah. It's true. Come on. Yeah. Come on. If you do what you can, God will do what he can. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So good. He can send the rain and he can defeat your enemy. Yes. But you've got a part to play. Yeah. Don't just say, I have faith. Oh, I have faith for my miracle. Good for you. <laughs> my Bible says in James 3, verse 220, faith without works is dead. Yeah. God, send me some money. <laughs> Pay your tithes. <laughs> <coughs> you've got to do your part. Yeah. You've got to dig the ditches. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're going to look at that for a while this morning. And we don't know how long these guys were without water for the animals, but you can be sure they're desperately thirsty, exhausted, weary, and troubled and facing certain defeat. And that might be you today. Weary, thirsty, struggling, facing certain defeat. But in this passage, as I've reflected on it, I see a picture of the church. I see the church of the West is desperately thirsty. Yeah. That's right. Facing certain defeat in so many different areas. 
desperately lacking the full power of the Holy Spirit to work your miracle, to heal your body, to bring your family to Christ, to work a miracle in your marriage, to set you free of addictions. That's why I say we're lacking, we're desperately thirsty for more of the water of God, the water of the Spirit to flow in this house. Is there a help, praise in the house for that? We need, we need this, don't we? Give God a shout. Give him something this morning. <clears throat> so we need them. We desperately need the Spirit of God to be poured out for the church to be revived yeah. and then for revival to come into our nations and to see miracles break out. But verse 11 is interesting. It says, is there not a prophet of the Lord here? Isn't there someone who can tell us what's going on? Is there any word from heaven that can explain why the church finds itself in the condition it finds itself? Is there anyone, is there a prophet of the Lord who can tell us why the church is lacking the power, is not influencing society, is somewhat compromised and lukewarm? Is there not a prophet in the house? It's a very good question. Why is the church in trouble today? Why is the church struggling? Why are you not getting your miracle? Why are you not getting the breakthroughs that you want to do? Because we have neglected digging the ditch and the wells of prayer. Because yeah. God said, my house will be a house of prayer for all nations. Yeah. The church was born when the church began to pray, 10 days in the upper room. This is not rocket science, friends. This has been the pattern of Scripture from day dot. It's right from the beginning of the church. They dug the wells of prayer. The Spirit was poured out. Miracles flow. Signs and wonders. Cities were transformed. Nations were transformed. Revival broke out. Is there not a prophet of the Lord? Is there not a word from heaven? I'm telling here to tell you today, there is a word from heaven. It's not complicated. It's not rocket science. It's not hard to understand. God is saying, get out your spade, get out your shovel, and start digging with all your might. Dig the wells of prayer, of the Holy Spirit, of the power of God, of revival, of the church being right. It's time to dig like never before. Now, you've heard me saying this for some time, I know, but I think it's worth repeating today that this is what we need to do. Now, let me just bring out some thoughts uh, on this whole thing uh, about digging here. And you know what was interesting? It said, uh, make the valley full of ditches. <coughs> make it full of ditches. What a crazy comment. There's no water. There's no rain. Make the valley full of ditches. Crazy. Crazy instruction. How many of you agree that's crazy? Yeah. And yet we know if they did anything else but dig the ditches, they would have been defeated. You know, sometimes you've got to do what God says, not what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Not what you think is the answer. Yeah. You need to find out, God, what do I need to do to get my miracle, to get my breakthrough, to get my answer? God, what, what is it? What is the word of the Lord? So often we say, but God, I've done this, and I've done this, and I've done this, and I've done this. But God says, it's not what I asked you to do. I wanted you to do that. Yeah. You know, I don't want you to get on your horses and ride back to town and get some water, water from somewhere else. He said, no, what I want you to do is to dig ditches. Yeah. You're going to find in the Bible that the miraculous and the ridiculous are usually connected. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. The reason we, they don't seem ridiculous to us because we've read it so many times. It's true. So, hey, Noah, build a boat. What's a boat? Well, it's a piece of wood, and you're going to live in it for a few days because the rain is going to come. What is rain? There's never been rain. What an insane request for 100 years. Yeah. Noah builds a boat when there's no sign of any rain. Because God says, that's what you need to do. Because yeah. the rain is going to come. Yeah. And it did come. Yeah. But what a crazy instruction yeah. to be given. The miraculous and the ridiculous are so often connected together. <clears throat> so he says to the widow and the son, down to the last meal, about to die. And uh, God says to him, give your last meal to Elijah. Hello? <laughs> We've got our last milk. We're going to die. Yeah. No, no. Ridiculous. Yeah. What you've got left, give it to Elijah 
and like far as you're concerned, go and die. Ridiculous. <clears throat> you're struggling financially. You can't meet your needs. Pay your tithes. Yeah. Ridiculous. Dig the ditch. Yeah. Do what you need to do. Do what God says, and God will send the water. Yeah. God will provide for you. Yeah. And then there's Naaman. Naaman, go and dig in the <laughs> dig. <coughs> Got leprosy. Go and dip in the Jordan River. Goes in once. No, not once. Twice. Surely. No, no, no. Seven times. I mean, how ridiculous is that? Yeah. Why not just th three times? Three is the number of resurrection. Why not three times? No, no. Do what God says. Yeah. Yeah. Do what God says. Yeah. He could have gone three times, and a lot of what the church does is partial obedience. We almost obey, but we don't quite obey. But we feel good because we've almost obeyed. Well, I almost did it right. I almost paid my whatever. God said, no, 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 obey. Do what I tell you. Seven times. And it wasn't until he came up after the seventh time that God actually healed him and set him free. When you're facing your giants, God gives... You know, sometimes we make a request from God. Write this down somewhere. And usually what he'll do is give you an instruction. He said, but God, this is what I want. He said, well, do this. He said, no, 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 God, I don't want to do this. Well, then he said, well, you can't have what you want. Requests are usually followed by instructions. <clears throat> so you have to make an instruction. God, heal me. Well, you need to do this and this and this. So it's, it's a, you know, faith without works is dead. Yeah. And so often now the weakness in our preaching is we give all the promises, yeah. but not the conditions. Yeah. And it doesn't work. People say, oh, it didn't work. Well, it didn't work because we didn't know what the conditions were or we didn't yeah. follow what the conditions were, were meant to be. Dig some ditches that you've never thought of digging. Here's some ditches you want to dig. Prayer, obviously. Fasting. Dig the ditch of fasting. Yeah, true. Dig the ditch of generosity. Yeah like you've never done before. Push it to another level. You know, I was pushing my generosity up. I don't, 10% is an absolute minimum, minimum. That's not digging a ditch, that's just doing what you need to do. When you give more, yeah. <clears throat> then you're starting to dig a ditch. Yeah. Push it way beyond, push it to 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 20, whatever. Just dig the ditch, generosity, yeah. sacrifice. Yeah. You know, make a real sacrifice, you know? I don't know, in your, in your sermon, where it might be. You're making a sacrifice for Jesus. You know, there's just so many different ditches that we can actually, actually dig. Here's another one. How about to, um, here's a good one. Forgive. Yeah. It's a good ditch to dig, folks. It's a real good one. Oh, I don't want to do that one, Lord. Okay, forget your miracle. For some of you, your miracle's connected to forgiveness. Yeah. Hello? Hello? There's another ditch. <clears throat> Launch into higher praise and worship. Yeah. Yeah. Praise and worship like you've never done before. Yeah. But you're saying, oh, I'm in the pits. Dig the ditch. Yeah. See, dig ditching's hard work. These guys were exhausted. No rain, no water for however long. They are shot. Still have to dig. Yeah. Come on, dig the ditches. And the more we keep digging... You know, some of you need to get a bigger shovel, by the way. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Tell the person next to you, you need a bigger shovel. Because your current shovel's not doing the job. You got this? Your current shovel is not doing the job. Your current prayer is not getting the job done. Yeah. Did you hear me? Yeah. Your current prayer is not getting the job done. It's not enough, friends. You can keep praying like you're praying. You're probably never going to get the answer. You need a bigger shovel. You need to dig deeper, and you need to dig longer and release the miracle that God wants to give you. Oh, I don't want to do that. Great. Live with your problem. With every request for a miracle, there's an instruction. Yeah. There's an instruction. Find out your instruction. What is the instruction? Have you ever asked God? 
You know, your instruction may be totally disconnected to the miracle you want. For example, your miracle, I'm not saying this for everyone, you want this miracle of healing, God says, forgive. You think, how can that be connected? It can. So you've got to find out what is he asking you to dig? What sacrifice is he asking you to give? I know for some people, they've got their miracle out of just giving a very generous offering to God because God told them that's what they needed to do. They didn't have much money, but God said, no, no, I want you to give this big offering. And they did, release their miracle. I'm not saying you should do that, but if that's what God says, see, is there not a prophet who can tell me what to do? <clears throat> so we need to hear from God what to do. 2 Chronicles 7 14, if my people will call by my name, right. humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, yeah. then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. That's right. For God to hear our prayers, heal our land, we've got to turn from our wicked ways. Yeah. Yeah. Can't leave that out. Oh God, I want a miracle. Turn from your wicked ways. Yeah, so God, I want a breakthrough. Stop watching that porn. Come on. Really good. God, I want to see a breakthrough in my life. Behave yourself. First words from the lips of Jesus, Matthew 3, verse 2, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repentance is the gateway. <laughs> you know, maybe one of the biggest ditches we all need to dig is repentance, man, yeah. and get our lives right before God. Yeah. 1 John 3, verse 22, whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Check it out, folks. You're wanting a miracle, you're wanting a breakthrough, you better check out that by the best of your ability, you're keeping his commandments and you're doing what's pleasing in his sight. You can't live a lukewarm, crumbleized life and then say, God, do this miracle for me. According to the Bible, <clears throat> it's gone very quiet here now, but never mind. Robert Murray McShane said this, a holy man is an awesome weapon in the hands of Almighty God. Woo! God, give us some more. Awesome weapons. Psalm 29, verse 2. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. <clears throat> now I understand in the godless world in which we live, where the internet is available to see whatever you want, it is a challenge to live a holy life. I'm not stupid. I know what's going on. I know what's out there. And I know how hard it is to live a godly and a holy life. But we need to do our part. Yeah. We need to dig the ditches. Yeah. We need to be fully surrendered to God. We need to set ourselves on fire. Yeah. We need to be praying. We need to be fasting. Yeah. We need to be surrendered. We need to be serving. We need to be in church every week. We need to be doing everything. We need to position ourselves so we can believe God for his power to live godly lives. If you're living a, a lukewarm life, you're in church half the time, you're, never, you know, you're not getting stuck into it. Friends, it's hard to then have the fervor and the prayer and the faith to live a godly life. Yeah. So you've got to position yourself. I love the verse in um, Titus 2, 11 and 12. For the grace of God that appeared, has, that offers salvation to all people, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. Have you got that? Yeah. The grace of God. You get close to God, yeah. you dig the wells of prayer, maybe a bit of fasting, whatever else God is doing, and then as you, as you do all those things, you can step into the grace of God. Yeah. The grace of God that teaches you to say? No. Teaches you to say? No. no to what? No to, where is my screen? No to, can I say no to what? No to? And? 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 Let's try it again. Teaches us to say no to ungodliness, worldly passions, and live self-control, upright, godly lives. This present age, give the Lord a praise. Oh, ho All right, enough said on that. <clears throat> so just be very careful. Whole sexual area, be very careful. You know what I'm talking about. Be honest with your finances. Pay your taxes. No cash deals under the table. Tell the person next to you, no cash deals under the table. 
You, you can't do that and expect miracles, folks. Hello? Hello? You can't do that. It's sin. It's wrong. <laughs> and God's going to struggle to bless you. Seriously. For a few measly dollars, you jeopardize the blessing of God on your life. Then you wonder why other stuff's going wrong. Well, you open a door. You open the door for the enemy to come in. So don't do it. Pay your, everyone say, pay your taxes. Pay your, everyone say, no under the table deals. No under the table deals. No cash deals. No cash deals. We should be called the no cash deals church. <coughs> Is my, my point? Is my point clear? <laughs> As I wrap this up, you know, the three kings of Badwin. Are we doing all right, by the way? Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, thank you. The three kings of Badwin, it was really difficult to do so. And that may be you today. You just think, man, it's so hard to obey. <clears throat> you know, digging these wells of prayer, you know, they were tired, they were thirsty. But we have to do what it takes. I want to repeat what I said last week because it impacted a number of people. And that is, it's time to shift our focus from all our struggles and all our battles, and all our worries, all the breakthroughs and miracles we need, just to shift our focus away. Yeah, we've prayed, we've been responsible, but now can I encourage you, park it. Yeah. Leave it with God. Yeah. Leave it with God. Yeah. Do not spend the rest of your life spending all your energy, all your anxiety, all your emotions, all your prayers on trying to deal with this issue that confronts you today. As we heard from Daniel Bates, don't be married to your mountain. and yeah. It absorbs your entire life. Yeah. I want to say, park it. And you say, well, hold on a minute. What's going to happen? Well, my Bible says this. Seek first the kingdom of God. Dig the wells of prayer. Serve, sacrifice, pray, give, be generous, all the rest of it. Live for Jesus, pray for revival. And he says, seek first the kingdom of God. And God says, look, I'll take care of your needs. I'll take care of your problems. In fact, I've heard people come to me and say, it was one of the most liberating words that they've heard because they're spending all their life stuck married to their problem. All their energy was just going on the struggle and they, they just didn't have much time. And by the way, the struggle wasn't getting sorted out either because they've actually they've prayed enough. There comes a time you've prayed enough, folks. It's time that you've fasted enough. It's not more prayer you need. It's more faith you need. Sometimes, it's, and sometimes faith is, God, I leave that with you and I trust you. I'm pouring my life into the kingdom of God. I'm serving with greater passion than ever before. I'm giving my energy to the kingdom of God. I'm giving my energy to prayer and digging the wells of revival. <clears throat> so park it, friends. Okay, Jonah 1, 5 to 6. Jonah was sound asleep down in the hold. So the captain went down after him. How can you sleep at a time like this? He shouted, get up and pray. Yeah. Jonah was sound asleep down in the hole. They're in a crisis. There's problems all around. They're in danger of losing their lives. And the captain goes down, he says to Jonah, how can you sleep at a time like this? Yeah. And I just leave the challenge with you once again, church, is how can we sleep? How can you sleep yeah. at a time when the church is in great disarray, in need of revival fire? Our nation is going out downhill at a rapid rate of knots. There's more shootings already taken place. And the friends, the doorways are open. The enemy is invading our nation like a flood. And the church is struggling to get ahead of the game. Friends, how can we sleep? How can we sleep at a time like this? How can you sleep at a time of struggle? How can you sleep when the church needs you and needs you, me, more than it's ever needed us before? It needs your prayers. It needs your faith. It needs your serving. You can make a difference. You can play a part in this. Friends, how can you sleep? And he goes down. The captain goes down. Jesus goes down and says to him, get up and pray. Get up and pray. Tell the person next to you, get up and pray. Come on, tell them again, get up and pray. 
Come on, every one of us, we need to get up and pray. The call to prayer is for every one of us. It's not for a few selected prayer. There's no gift of prayer in the Bible. God expects everyone to pray. Martin Luther King said this. We are confronted with the fierce urgency of now. This is no time for apathy or complacency. This is a time for vigorous, positive action. Wow. We're confronted with the fierce urgency of now. How many of you feel an urgency? Give me a wave. Yeah, mostly near the front. <laughs> up in the balcony, how many of you feel this urgency? Yeah, there's some hands up there as well. Fantastic. The fierce urgency of now. You know, can I just say as nicely as I can as pastor, <clears throat> if we're not feeling an urgency, we're actually asleep. Yeah, come on. Come on. Actually asleep. And no fireman sleeps while the city burns. Our city's burning, folks. The nation's burning. And the church is somewhat burning as well. No fireman sleeps. No fireman sleeps. They get up and they do what they have to do, even at the risk of their lives. <clears throat> I finish with this. The prayers of the elect affect more than the actions of the elected. You and I, yeah. we have been elected already. Yeah. You and I have been elected already. God has elected you to be a leader in this nation, to bring change and to bring transformation, to shift this nation back to Jesus. Not only has he elected you, he has given you the power of the Holy Spirit to dig the wells and to make a difference in our nation. We are the elected of God to change this nation. I said we are the elected of God and we have called, we are anointed by God to change and bring transformation to the nation. You don't have to wait for someone to elect you. You're called by God. You're anointed by God. We we have been given what it takes. We are the elected. Stand with me, everyone, please. We are the elected of God. Elected, not only elected, but anointed. Problem with the government, they're elected, but most of them are not anointed. There might be a few who are, but we're elected. We're anointed. We're filled with the Spirit. We've got resurrection power inside of us. We can bring a mighty revival.